Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today I have a full face get ready with, uh, with me for you, as well as a first impression with some ZC products that were sent to me in PR. Welcome to everybody watching today's video. Thank you so very much for being here today. I'm going to be doing my makeup with some products from my Shop My Stash, but for the most part, this video is going to be focusing on trying out some of the new products that ZC sent me over from their Nutcracker collection. They contacted me saying, hey, would you like to try these out? And it was a great coincidence because ZC was still on my list as a brand to try in 2022. So I now have a couple of products from them to try out and I'm going to be supplementing some other products as we go along. In case you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Micah. I love doing makeup related content on here as well as a little bit of fashion. My main focus are eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews and getting the use out of my products. So you can be sure that if these products have a good first impression that they will very often make an, an appearance again on my channel, either in a shop my stash or in roundup review videos that I also like to do. So um, yeah, let, without further ado, let's just get to these products. I will first be talking to you about the products from ZC that I have, and then I'll go into the makeup look. So I was already holding it up, but there are two new products that I received from them from their Nutcracker collection, and it's a face and eye palette and a powder. Um, and the, the packaging of these boxes, like, this is why I wanted to try Zishi so terribly badly, because they do some stunning packaging. So the powder is the Nutcracker ZC uh, Marvelous Fantasia Sheer Compact Powder. This is shade 01. I believe they, it comes in a lot of different finishes. Um, it, they all seem to be like translucent powders, and I opted for their glowy one. It comes with a little sponge, but I'll just be using my brush with this. Again, the compact is really pretty too. And then we have the powder. I'll make sure to make uh, to put some pictures up from the swatches that I've done so far. I haven't used these on my face yet, so it's going to be a true, true first impression. But from touching this, I can already tell you that it feels very finely milled. Like it barely shows up on the back of my finger. I'm not sure if you can see, but it seems to have a bit of a glow, but it's not super matte either. Like it's it's a very strange finish. I've never seen a powder like this. And I can't even swatch this on the back of my hand because it is so light that it doesn't show up at all. So I have high hopes that when I put this actually on my face, that it's going to be nearly undetectable. And I like that kind of texture on my dry skin usually. And then the second product that I have from this line is a palette. This is the Marvelous Fantasia 12 Color Eye and Cheek Palette. This comes in two shades and I have the more cool tone version of the two. I believe it was called something like Rose something. I don't know. They don't put the names on the packaging. It's really, really cute. It has the same front as the box and then it just opens like a little book like this. And then if I'm not mistaken, then the way this palette is laid out is that the four larger pans are cheek products. So you get a contour, a highlight and two blushes. And then these are eyeshadows and these are eyeshadows. Now, something you should know about Zishi products is that they do press glitters in everything. So this is definitely a press glitter. Uh, you'll see in the close-up pictures for sure. This is very sort of thick and sparkly as well. This seems to be more like an iridescent shimmer. I have not tried this either. I've only swatched it so far. So I'm going to try this out. And um, I'm no I know that this contoury bronzery shade isn't going to be enough for me to contour. And I also have to say that, I mean, this is my blush brush. So <laughs> the pans are a little bit small to be using with face brushes, I would have to say. So that's a, a thing I instantly noticed, but I mean, you barely want to even use this product because as you will be able to tell from the close-ups, the little picture from the front of the palette is embossed across the different pans. It's like a little storybook as you look from pan to pan. It's very nicely done. Again, here, just to do some live swatching, uh, I'll swatch the highlighter for you and a blush and like this like eyeshadow as well. And you can just tell that these are really soft, very buttery smooth mattes for sure. So I was very impressed. There's a highlighter, that's the blush and that's the eyeshadow. I have to say that one of the things that I noticed as I was swatching these 
is that in the eyeshadows, save for these very sparkly shades that are very sort of glitter heavy, you don't get any other shimmer formula, which is a bit of a shame. So I'm actually thinking that maybe I have to use that highlighter shade as a bit of a hybrid and also use it on the eyes. I'm pretty sure the powders are created equal in that sense. Um, but yeah, very pretty collection, very pretty palette indeed, and I hope it's going to work quite well on me. The color story is a little bit more peachy toned than I had expected, but I think it can be pretty. And then finally for lips, they did also send me one of their Gift Guild Gold Dragon Velvet lipsticks. This is from the Palace Identity line, and I've kept it in a box because, I mean, again, just for the packaging alone, you want to own one of these. It comes with a little card, and then that's what the lipstick looks like. It has a golden tube, and then it has a dragon sitting on top. This is, I believe, in the shade Princess. It's M05, and it's this really pretty rosy pink. They do some stunning reds as well, but I already have a lot of reds, so I decided to go with a color that I don't have a lot yet. So this is what's going to go onto my lips towards the end of this video. So let me pull my hair back and then we're gonna get started with the rest of this makeup look. So the first step in my makeup routine is going to be primer, but unlike a standard primer, I thought we could have some fun and go in with the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow Highlighter in Cosmic Rose. I've actually been liking this product to use it firstly all over my face, just to add a bit of a glowy base before going in with my foundation. Does it do a whole lot of priming? Maybe not, but this highlighter does boast some skincare properties and then it makes more sense to me to use it all over my face. And maybe if the highlighter from the palette isn't up to my liking, I might go in with a little bit of this extra and uh, layer it underneath the powder highlighter. For my eye primer, I'm using the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. This has been in my shop my stash for some time, and you know that this is my favorite eyeshadow primer if you've been with me for a while. Next up is foundation, and this is the NYX Born to Glow foundation. I'm trying out some more drugstore foundations this year. Last year I really focused on trying some high-end things, and this year I thought I need to try some more affordable stuff. Um, and the NYX Born to Glow is really, really nice. I just feel that it doesn't really hold up very well on my skin. It definitely doesn't really look nice on my chin, I have found so far. But I definitely need to give it a bit more of a test as I'm, as I'm filming this. By the time you're watching this, I think I will have a review up on my blog already. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of pre-filming some things out of order. So I'm sort of putting it on again today just to test it out. Um, I've only used it once or twice so far. So that was really just based on, you know, me applying it and wearing it. Um, but yeah, we'll see if it holds up today. So I like the way this initially goes on. It's got a really good shape match for me. This is in the shade Porcelain, and I really like the way this looks when it first goes on. I just experienced it not looking great around my nose and on my cheek uh, and my chin after like a couple of hours of wears. For concealer, the Nabla Regeneration Concealer in Light Ivory. I've mentioned how I would like to try and use this up because with one of those sponge tip applicators, it just gets so messy so quickly. So I just want to get this over and done with ASAP. And that's what the concealer looks like. I'm going to be doing my brows really quickly, which is with these two Catrice products that I've had in my shop my stash for a while. And then before I powder, I do want to apply a bit of the Milk Makeup Bronzer in Baked. 
and a little bit more of the Lisa Eldridge um, Elevated Glow Highlighter because now I still have a cream base and that way I have a nice layer for these other products to sit on top of, I'm sure. So let me do my brows and those two steps, speed you through it, and then I'll get to the powder. So I've set everything up so we can keep the train rolling and we can just go straight into these ZC products. Um, so the Nutcracker ZC um, powder, as I said, has a little bit of a glowy finish. So I'm just going to grab my Sigma F25 brush. This is the brush I always use for powder. And then I'm going to see how this goes. Let's see how it picks up. Ooh, it coats the brush quite nicely. Ooh, it's like almost like a blurring airbrushed effect. Okay, so as far as the first impression from a powder goes, I mean, I can't say too much about this just yet. I definitely need to see how this plays with the makeup and how it sits on my skin for a longer period of time, and I also need to try this with other foundations that I already know quite well, because this foundation is quite new to me as well. So I don't know how they're gonna play together, I don't know how that's gonna wear, so I'm just going to be wearing this for the rest of the day, and I definitely need to put this in a shop my stash at some point to really give you the full lowdown. But first impression, it doesn't really do a lot in terms of like true, true mattifying. It just makes it look a little bit more perfected. It's definitely more of a finishing powder, I would say, rather than a setting powder. So I prefer finishing powders because they are usually a lot more lightweight and a lot more just to give a bit of a finish to the skin rather than it really setting down your makeup. My dry skin doesn't really need that kind of like level of locking in something. Plus I will be going in with a setting spray before I do my mascara to really meld everything together. But yeah, I feel that it tones down the shininess just a little bit. It seems to be like handling my T-zone quite well for now. I'm curious to see what it will do on my under eyes because I always powder my under eyes and it's like the best way to tell whether a powder works for me is if it makes my under eye look very dry and cakey. It's not doing that so far. So I'm liking this so far. And then we're going to move in with the products from the palette. So I am going to be doing, because I very deliberately didn't put a lot of bronzer on this side of my cheeks. It's just that this contour shade is so gray toned that I don't think it's going to be perfect for me in terms of like bronzing plus this is my bronzer brush and my brush is much bigger than the pan so this is going to turn into a mess so I'm going to be doing bronzer highlighter blush as I normally would I think for these two blushes I'm just going to swirl them together um, they're both matte and one seems to be like a lighter peach tone and the other one like a peachy coral tone so I think they can be nice if you were to dip your brush into both and just put them on my cheeks and then I'll come back to you to let you know what I think of the cheek products in the palette So the ZC cheek products, nice, good blendability, but very light, and I feel the undertones don't really go together. In terms of the way these powders perform, I think 
you know, if you're going for that very light, almost ethereal kind of look that you find a lot in Asian beauty products, then this is great. However, if you're used to more Western styles where, you know, you have intense bronzers and you're doing the full beat that you see people doing on Instagram still till this day, this is not going to be your cup of tea. So it really depends on your personal preferences, whether you might like this. You should know that this like contoury, bronzery shade is very gray toned. I'm not sure if you can see, but especially I feel on this cheek that it looks very, very, very gray. It's not like even ashy, it's just dead looking. And on me, even though I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I feel it doesn't even really work as a contour. The highlighter is very pretty, but it is quite warm toned compared to everything else that the palette has going on. In the pen, it looks like a pinky tone, but it's definitely like a golden champagne. The two peachy tone blushes I think are pretty. I had just preferred it even more if we didn't just get two, like a deeper and a lighter shade, but if one of these also had a bit more glow to it. So for instance, if this was more of like a Nars orgasm kind of shade, and then this one have a matte, and then that one be the shimmer, I think this could have been even prettier. Right now, I just fused them together, and I think that worked quite well. Um, good payoff. Um, the light shade is very light, so if you have super fair skin, this is going to work for you. And then that darker corally shade is very pretty too. I'm going to go and con keep continue using this product because we still have eight eyeshadows to test out. Now, these shadows, we get two browns, again, like a rosy mauvey shade, a peachy tone, and then here we get something with a little bit of sparkle, but I don't think it's the kind of sparkle that will really stick to your, to your lid. Then we have those two glittery shades, and we get a matte cream. So the eyeshadows look very light, uh, not a lot of depth of dim or dimension here, I'm sure, but for my fair skin, it may be really, really pretty. I'm just going to see what happens if I try using all eight shades in a look. So I've got a blend shade, I've got some things for the lid, um, something for the lower lash line, um, something for the crease. So I'm pretty sure I can make a pretty look with this. So I'm going to zoom you in, do the look, and then I'm going to tell you about my experience using these. The eyeshadows in this palette are very pretty. They are very soft as well. So I do feel that they blend a little too easily and that they are a little bit more difficult to build up than I would like. Um, I used both of these browns in the crease and then I used the two peachy shades all over the lid and then I topped the lid off with that pressed glitter. It has enough of an adherence already in the pan that you can just press it on with the finger and you don't need to do uh, use a glitter glue. It's got actual stars in it, which is really pretty, but it's very difficult to sort of get it on even because the sparkles in this pressed glitter are quite big and chunky. And also when you stick your finger in, you can like feel the glitter sort of like pricking into your finger. So how I safe this pressed glitter is, I cannot attest to that. I'm not a contact lens wearer and I always like, make sure I take off my makeup quite properly. So I'm not too afraid that these will damage my eyes, but 
If that's something that worries you, then this is not the palette for you for sure. I use this creamy shade as a blend shade. This iridescent sparkle that looks like a boring champagne in the pan actually has a bit of a bluish purple flip. And it's what I used in my inner corners. I used this on the lower lash line. And just to see if it could work, a little bit of that contour shade. Because now that I've used it on the face and seeing how gray toned it actually is, I think I would actually prefer using this as a crease shade or as an eyeshadow, but I think it's too sheer to really be using that, that as an eyeshadow. And I also felt that this rosy tone, it looks like more like a mauve toned rose shade in the pan, but I felt it had quite a bit of warmth as it went on on the lower lash line. But yeah, very pretty eye look for sure, perfect for spring. Um, and the shades don't wow me. I mean, it's similar to the cheek products actually where they're very smooth very soft but very buttery but in terms of what these shades do i wish they were a little bit more cool tone perhaps definitely when i got this palette home i felt it was a little bit more warm toned leaning than i had expected looking at the pictures online so that may be good to know but if you have fair skin and you really like very soft shades then this is very pretty indeed i'm very happy i got to try this um, is it a palette I will be going back to non-stop? Probably not, but I'm glad that I got to try the formula. And as you can see, you can create a very pretty look with this indeed. And then there's just one more product left, and that is this stunning lipstick. So I hope that the lipstick itself is as stunning as the packaging. As I already mentioned, this is supposed to be like a rosy pink kind of shade. There's a lot of embossing on this bullet, making you not even want to use it, like the palette. So um, there's like a dragon, like all embossed on this bullet. And I was hoping that this shade could be a little bit more unique to my makeup collection, but I haven't tried it on my face yet. So let's find out together how stunning this actually is. So that is what the ZC lipstick looks like. It also, again, the bullet looked differently from what I had expected looking from the pictures. I thought it was more like plummy rose and it's definitely more of a peachy rose. Um, it's definitely still a rosy shade. It goes really well with the peachy tones from the palette. It's sort of like a very pretty monochromatic look because we've got those peachy blushes, the peachy uh, eyeshadows, and then this really pretty peachy toned lipstick. This is definitely different from anything else I have going on in my lipstick collection. The formula feels quite thin, I have to say. It's definitely a, I thought it was going to be richer and creamier having seen this being swatched by people online and also from the way it's swatched on the back of my hand. But going on, I definitely had to like add a couple of layers. So in a way that can be good for a lipstick like this because it means you can wear it more sheer as a bit of a tint and or you can build it up and wear it more full on like I'm wearing right now. So I think that this is these are nice products. Are they worth the price point? Um, I think of these, I think the powder may be the best and more unique when it comes to a formula. Um, shade wise, I think that these are really, really nice, but it's really the packaging where it's at here. And so I leave it up to you to decide for yourself whether you find that then worth the money. In my experience, I also want a product to be like really good and I'd rather have cheap looking uh, packaging that's not that exciting but a really good product inside it. And here I'm like, the products are nice, but these feel to me like more like drugstore priced items rather than the price point that these go to be go for because I believe the palette is like $32, the lipstick is like close to $30 as well as is the powder, it's like all around the $30 mark. And these are nice, but I definitely think that quite a bit of money it goes out towards the, you know, the packaging and like a compact like this. And then the way it is stored, the way you get it in this little box. So you definitely do pay for that as well, I feel. So nice products for sure. Um, um, this, These were all my own opinions, by the way. I wasn't paid to say anything about these. I was just sent the products to try them out and give you my honest 
thoughts on the uh, on these products as I was trying them out. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week, so if you'd like to subscribe and come back for more. For now, I would like to wish you a great day. Take care, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.